Hello and welcome to this energy investment analysis lesson on cash flow for solar power. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the correct dollar per kilowatt hour to use for energy improvements. And we're going to define solar renewable energy credits and state why the markets for them exist. Discuss the different markets and rules for SREX and identify when the consumer or company owns the SREX. And calculate how the degradation of solar power output affects the cash flow of a photovoltaic system. And also calculate loan payments in Excel. So let's talk about two ways to calculate electricity rates and which is correct. So there's two separate ways we could calculate the dollar per kilowatt hour. We could get the total bill, the total electricity bill, and divide by the kilowatt hour usage, or we could divide only the energy charges by the kilowatt hour usage. So take a second to think about what is correct in this example. And if you have the slideshow open, you can click this link to download the utility bill that we're going to use in the next couple examples. So let's start with number one. If we look at the utility bill that I mentioned, we're going to take the total kilowatt hours, which is the 42,240, and divide by the total bill, which is 40,060 and 88 cents. And we get 9.61 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, so that's relatively straightforward. Now let's look at the other method. Now we're going to look at the energy charges. So what I mean by the energy charges are any charges that would change when the kilowatt hour or energy usage increases. So let's take a look at two different things here. If we take a look at these charges up here, the distribution charge, the first distribution charge, is dependent on the kilowatts, which is the power. So that's a power charge. So we're not going to include that in our calculation. This is because the solar panels may not decrease the peak demand. This is a more advanced concept to think about. But that means that the 118 is that peak demand for the month, and maybe your solar panels aren't generating during that. So we're going to use this conservative way of estimating our cost per kilowatt hour. So we take the energy charges from up here, anything that says kilowatt hour or anything's charged per kilowatt hour up here, and that's this 272.66. And then the supply charges that are down here are the 3,203.48. For a more detailed explanation of this, you can watch my energy accounting playlist. So now we total up the energy charges, and we, seen, we keep the same total kilowatt hour usage. And this ends up being 8.23 cents per kilowatt hour. So these are our results from number one and number two. And it turns out there's a 17% difference. So which one should we use and why? So what I would recommend, and as I discussed in the last slide, is to use this lower number. This is a more conservative number and doesn't include fixed charges, such as the customer charge, or power charges, such as the, the peak kilowatt charges that we saw on the bill. This way, you're not making any assumptions about um, reducing your peak demand with your solar power. And it's a more conservative number to use. So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about a different way to generate revenue from your solar power system. So obviously, the first way to generate revenue is electricity savings, and that's what we calculated in the last slide. But now let's talk about solar renewable energy credits. So this is a um, definition of solar renewable energy credits from srectrade.com. But I want to point out two different things here, two main things. First that one solar renewable energy credit is a megawatt hour of solar electricity created. Okay? And the other thing is it's created, these are, these are created by the renewable portfolio standard. So let's start with the renewable portfolio standard. So this is the renewable portfolio standard policies for the whole U.S. You can see there's lots of different varying policies all over the country. Some states have very aggressive targets, while other states have none. Um, you can see that Delaware is sort of right in the middle, where it has 25% by 2026. And that's going to be um, renewable. Um, so we need to have 25% of our electricity come from renewable sources. And that's what all of these are um, looking at. 
Now, there's a, sometimes there's a breakdown in all of these policies of different renewable sources. So if we look at these uh, renewable portfolio standards that have solar or distributed gener generation pr provisions, so solar is just a um, specific type of distributed generation. Usually distributed generation means a small generator of some sort, like a residential generator or a small business um, generator. Um, so a wind turbine a lot of times in other states is uh, like that. So if we look at Delaware on the right side, we need to have 3.5% PV, which is photovoltaic or solar panels, by 2026. So there is a little asterisk here, or a little, I don't know what you call this, a diamond. And so it's a little bit different, but Delaware allows certain fuel cell systems to qualify for the PV carve-out. So I'm not going to get into the, all the politics here, um, why this is the case. But the basically what this means is some fuel cells that take in natural gas and make electricity can qualify for the solar renewable energy carve-out. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit hairy, and um, it's, it's, it was used as a carrot to, to get a company here to produce fuel cells. So, now, so what does this mean? Why is this renewable portfolio standard linked with the solar renewable energy credit? So let's go back to our um, SREC um, definition. So what this 3.5% solar by 2025 means, um, or 2026 in Delaware means, is that utility companies have to either own the solar generation that produces this much, or they have to buy solar renewable energy credits to say that they are complying with this 3.5%. So all it means is that the utility companies have to earn a certain number of solar renewable energy credits each year. And really what's happening is that every year um, they have to earn a little bit, a little bit more until the 3.5% in 2026. And if they don't earn enough credits, they have to pay a fine or Solar Alternative Compliance Payment, SACP. So any utilities that don't own enough solar renewable energy credits have to pay this fine. So that's where the solar renewable energy credit market comes from. But for the consumer, it gets a little bit hairy in Delaware. There are actually three ways to sell SRECs in Delaware. And that's the SREC spot market, the SREC procurement program, and the SREC purchase program. So I do want to show you, there's these links here. Um, and let's just click on one of them, and I'll show you what it brings up. So it brings up a really, really good resource called Desire. So it's, um, it's from the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center. And it has a really good overview of a bunch of different um, incentives for renewable energy. Um, so, so you can see this is these are the websites for the Delaware SRECs, but there's all sorts of renewable energy and energy efficiency um, programs that they they give a lot of information for. So I just want to show you that. So there's three different types, and all these link to the Desire website. There's the spot market, the procurement program, and the purchase program. So let me go through all three separately. So the SREX can be sold um, up to three years after they're generated, and that's why you sort of um, see some of these different years, um, these different year colored lines in this um, graph. So the big thing here is these are the prices. On the left-hand side are the prices, price per SREC sold in different years in Delaware. So this is the open market. So you can sell your SRECs on the open market every single year, um, or you can hoard them for three years when they've been generated. And these are the market prices. So these, you can see this fluctuates um, quite a bit, and actually it's been de decreasing or staying flat in, uh, since 2011 and decreased a lot from 2009 to 2011. So this is very dependent on renewable portfolio standard policy, and these prices are, are very dependent on that. So it's something that may fluctuate up and down in the future, and it's hard to guess. But as a consumer, if you wanted to, you could, every time you have an SREC generated, you could decide when to sell it on this market. So that's one option you have for SRECs. The second option is the SREC procurement program. So this is a program made to give consumers a little more um, 
you know, a little less risky investment in SREX. So what happens is a competitive bid system is conducted for several different tiers. So in general, this N1, E1, E2 tier is small residential systems uh, or, or small commercial systems. These are larger systems, the N2. The N3 are even larger systems, so and so on. So um, there's a certain number of SRECs that during this um, competitive bid system will be bought in each of these tiers. So um, the results for this procurement program in 2015 for each of the tiers are listed below. So for example, for this small residential or N1, E1, E2 tier, the high bid that won was $100 the low bid that one was 30, and the weighted average was 60. So on average, this tier um, for each SREC is $60. But some people got $100, and some people got $30 for SREC. And how it works is one time a year, so one time in 2015, you submit your bid to this procurement program. And if you win the bid, then let's say you submitted a bid of $70 in this tier. If you win the bid, you not only get the $70 for the SREX you've produced for that year, you get a, um, you get a price of $70 for the next 10 years. So every SREC you generate for the next 10 years, you're going to get $70 for that SREC. And then on top of that, for the following 10 years, so from years 11 to 20, you're going to get $35 for your SREX. So again, I, I, I did a link to SREC Delaware to give you more details about this. But it's, a little le it's much less risky than the um, open market or spot market um, program. But still, you might not win your bid. Um, so you would have to go back and buy on that open market for the years you don't win that bid. So there's pros and cons to it and something to take into account when you make your cash flows. So the last purchase is, um, the last option you have for your SREX is to actually get rid of all your SREX on day one of your system. So the Sustainable Energy Utility of Delaware, or the SEU, will give you a flat rate of $450 per kilowatt of your solar installed. So if you have a two kilowatt system, they'll just give you $900 up front, and they bought your SREX for the next 20 years. So this is another option. This is the least risky because you know exactly what you're going to get for your SREX up front. But you may have to think about when you're making your cash flows if that's the most beneficial. So just a note about SREX ownership. SREX are only owned by the customer when the solar system is bought or financed by the customer. So when the solar panels are actually owned by the customer. They are not owned by the customer in a power purchase agreement or PPA or in a lease agreement. So a lot of the quotes that you may look at may be PPA or a lease agreement, and you don't own the SREX, the company does. So that's something big to think about as you're doing um, these sort of cash flow calculations. So the next video, we're going to go over solar degradation and loan payments um, in an Excel file. Thanks for watching. <laughs>